Hello, my name is Connor Mack, and this is Job Jumpers, uh, the podcast for people who jump from shitty job to shitty job, like myself. On today's program, we have my new friend Joe. Uh, we have a really good chat about building cubicles, how important self advocacy is in the workplace. Uh, the potential of an upcoming UPS strike, and most interestingly, working for a doomsday prepper who, for some reason, wanted to build himself an earthworm farm. So there's definitely a lot going on today, Uh, so we might as well just get to it. Here's my conversation with Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Job Jumpers. Uh, Today on the program, we have my new friend, Joe. Um, Joe, before we get into everything, how the heck are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I just just scarfed down a bunch of meatloaf and uh, and made a a whiskey and ginger ale, and uh, I think I'm ready to go. Nice. Hey, that... Sounds like you're you're in a pretty good position to to talk some shit about jobs. Yeah, as long as I don't have to move very much. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um so the the first thing that I like to kind of get out of the way is the the whole question people ask you when they first meet you, which is which is what do you do? And pretty much what they are expecting you to to answer is is like what is your job you know what is your career uh, whenever you you know you you meet somebody new especially if it's at kind of a uh a family function or like a uh some sort of professional setting you know you're expected to tell them about your career what do you do and obviously um i believe you know there's a lot more to to like what I do than just the job. Like I have a million other things I want to say, but I know that that's not, that's not what they are looking for. Um, right. so, so, so taking work out of the equation, just just take the question at face value. Um, what do you do, Joe? Um, I, uh, I usually just kind of make small messes, um, and, uh, just kind of find various things to, uh, to start and occasionally complete. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully I can do some fishing in between all that. Nice. Um, and everything else is just kind of a means towards those ends, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... And, I, and I have a toddler. So now that's kind of my oh, main thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that definitely complicates things. Yeah, I, I don't do much fishing anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe one day you can go fishing together. You know, that'll be a uh, maybe a you know future future. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's that's definitely uh, one of those. Um, you know, like if I had a motivational poster, uh, like a, a keep your head up, little buddy poster, <laughs> it'd be it'd be uh it'd be me and uh me and my little man fishing nice like that's that's the dream <laughs> yeah no i mean hey uh that's that's a quite the noble dream um yeah i i i definitely can relate to uh starting messes and and coming up with things and and you know getting halfway into them or kind of tinkering yeah tinkering exactly i mean i i've i've uh you know put out about a thousand different podcasts over the last decade and um you know, i mean you know different things interest me and you know i kind of it's it's all part of the story so so i think that's that's a good way of looking at it um yeah they're all experiences with you know something to there's something there yeah in, in all of it Exactly. Even if it's like, you know, in an objectively terrible piece of art, either there's still a kernel of truth you uh you you you, you know you can take from it. Um so now let's kind of put that question uh back back in uh, the real world here. Um you know, when when they ask you what do you do? 
what do you do for a living? What's your answer to that question? What do you do for a living? Um, unfortunately, I am a cubicle guy. Oh. So I I do um, commercial office furniture installation. Hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah, so I build cubicles gotcha. and uh, install office furniture and um, build like demountable wall offices. You know, kind of a uh, uh, you know temporary rooms, kind of. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because because when you say that you're a cubicle guy, the the first thing I think of is that you work in a cubicle all day, but that that is not the case. Yeah, that that's the that's the good part of the job. The bad yeah. part of the job is, is getting the cubicles in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I, you know, I, I've, I've been in a thousand offices and, and I've, I've, you know, seen a thousand, even today, you know, I walked by a bunch of cubicles work, working in an office and, uh, I, 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 you know, never once thought of somebody actually having to put those things together. I, you know, I, I, it's, <laughs> I, yeah, I just, it's, it's, it's honestly not a bad job. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's still kind of manual labor. I'm, I'm, you know, imagining that there is, uh, more that goes into it than, than I can, you know, than I'm assuming. Yeah. It is a lot of, um, just kind of, uh, you know, warehouse work, receiving, um, you know, prepping things. Occasionally you're, you know, carrying a large desk up a staircase, yeah. um, or something like that. Um, but the actual assembly work is, you know, it, I mean, it varies by manufacturer. Some of them are more installer friendly than others. Um, uh, yeah. but generally it's like, if you have a tape, if you can read a tape measure and you know how to use like a drill and an impact driver, then you can make $23 an hour. Hey, I mean, that's not bad for, not uh, bad. for what it is. Yeah, no, that, that, I mean, Sounds sounds like a pretty decent gig, all things considered. Um, Joe, do you consider yourself a job jumper? Um, I I kind of uh, yeah. I I'm I've had to settle down a little bit um, yeah. with with my son here, but I uh, I definitely I definitely was uh, in my earlier years, and I'm still I I still try to keep uh, at least a toe or two out the door. Um, you know, just in case something, something better comes by or something, something more interesting. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, I, I think that's probably the, the smart move. Yeah. That, that's the, that's the fear, you know, for, for me, it's like, ah, oh, man, if I, if I do have a kid, like I'll have to, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I feel like it just won't matter to me anymore. Like it, it, it will just matter so much less how unhappy I am at a job and, uh, so much more, you know, the, the happiness of, of my kid or the stability, you know? So it's, it, it's, it's a massive priority shifter, I imagine. Um, it, it definitely is, but it, at the same time, it like when, with the stress of, of having a kid and, um, and, and my son's autistic and we've been, uh, just got him started into, speech therapy and Mm -hmm. all this and it's been kind of a a you know not the the child uh experience that we expected sure um and that's a you know an emotional and uh um and also physical adjustment just of you know i mean he's heavy uh and you always got to carry him around and he wakes you up in the middle of the night so you don't get any sleep so there's a lot of like having a like if your job sucks on top of that, then it is just a, just a slog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. So I... it, it, it almost becomes more important, at least for me, because that's like kind of, I mean, I enjoy work um, and I can't, I can't help it. Um, so that's kind of like my, you know, the, going to work and, and building stuff is my happy place. So if, if I can't even enjoy that, then it's like, what, what am I even doing? Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you got to find, find some kind of, uh, piece, even if it is in, in, uh, you know, installing cubicles, you know, I think that's, 
it's, you know, it's, it's got some zen some zen qualities yeah it's just a lot of repetitive uh a lot of repetitive um you know just little small things just putting screws in doing things with your hands yeah kind of keeping busy yeah no i mean i th- i i think that makes sense i i always feel like whenever i'm like doing uh something laborious or like physical i'm i'm like dead set against doing it i just don't want to do it I'm, I'm putting it off whatever it is i'm putting off for days or months or something and then then i do it and then i'm like man i feel really good why do i feel so good i'm like yeah because i've been moving my body all day i've been i've, I've been yeah. actually like physically active uh i'm like oh man it's it's it's, it's true what they tell you about about exercise um, it yeah yeah it it really is um and it and it sucks getting started yeah um, yeah and as long as you just never stop then you're fine <laughs> yeah it's it, you know body in motion stays in motion i guess uh um, yeah okay so here this is the moment we've been waiting for this is when the real show begins um you you know what what when you we, we we talked briefly about kind of your your uh story um I, you know it's very very interested it seems like you you've definitely had some uh some some interesting jobs um so i kind of want to start from the beginning here um you know getting into working um so i mean from the top uh joke please you know tell me your job jumping story well, so I started out, um, I guess, as as uh, as most people do, um, working at a a uh, a casual sit down uh, chain restaurant um, by the name of Mellow Mushroom. Oh, um, well, I've I, I've <laughs> I've been to uh, a Mellow Mushroom. They're they're pretty cool. I mean, they usually have like uh, you know a, a pretty good soundtrack. Uh, or, or you know, radio station that they play from, and uh, it's it's all you know like psychedelic themed and stuff. I mean, it's uh, you know the pay sucks and it's you know shitty busboy work. Um, yeah, of course. That, that's what I did uh, when I was 15, um, and then went over to the grocery store to Kroger from there, um, and uh, basically worked all of the in every department there. Um, and got like a, I don't know, a 10 cent raise over like the almost two years I was there. <laughs> um, then, you know, I'm in Alabama, so I'm, you know, the minimum wage, um, then was like seven twenty five. It's like seven thirty five now or something. Yeah. What a difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember, I, I remember when I got a job that paid $8 and I was like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I've made it. I have made it somewhere now. Yeah. Making the big bucks. Yeah, and then um, I got a uh, in the the very predatory practice of um, being uh, well. I guess I was a victim of it of uh, working at Abercrombie Kids. Abercrombie Kids. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, mall? it's weird. They yes, yes, at a mall. <laughs> yeah, next door to the to the big boy Abercrombie. Okay. Um. And I guess their hire their hiring managers have quotas for hiring every week, so oh. they would just like have ten people in the food court, and they'd all get hired, and they'd <laughs> give you like four hours a week until you just stopped coming back. Oh my god! Um, which is which is what I did. Um, and then I I had a, a buddy um who said, hey, you know, my boss said, uh, you know, hey, go find you a helper. Uh, somebody you can work with and um that's how i actually got into the the cubicle business um and i was just basically working cash as a uh as a helper there just kind of on and off part-time for probably like four years before i started doing it full-time um and then i had well well i don't know why i'm trying to remember this i wrote these all down um <laughs> And then I got a uh, Stevie B's, um, which is a, uh, I guess regional, a uh, kind of CC style pizza buffet place. Um, I loved CC's. Yeah, they paid 
They paid a uh, minimum wage, no matter what you were doing, <laughs> cooking, cleaning. It all paid the same. Um, At least you know they they believe in equality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are definitely no uh, no no worries about discussing pay because you all know what you're making. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so that that's actually the only job that I ever just I just walked out of because um, I remember they. It was like a closing shift, and it was like 10.30, and this new manager um, was like, all right, uh, new policy, but we're going to deep clean the store every night, and we're going to start right now, and it's going to take like two hours. And he just started just like hosing all the floors down. And I was like, you know, just like this, I'm out. That is an insane thing to do. Yeah, he got fired like two weeks after that so we're gonna deep least... clean the store every night yeah and just like on a like like a five minute notice yeah. like at the end of the shift basically i i just like i i like to get some insight into like who told him that that was a good idea or if it was just him kind of on a power trip that he just kind of had that idea himself like what the... That's kind of the impression that I got, and this guy like nobody liked him, and he didn't care to try to change that, um, uh -huh. which is always a bad sign. Yep. Because uh, like you, you can be, it's like you can you can be like a little bit of an asshole and, sure. and get away with it as a yeah. manager, but like you have people have to at least tolerate you sometimes. Yeah. And this guy did not care about any of that. Yeah. He's just one of those those hard asses. Yeah, he was some like semi pro hockey player or something. <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> um, Did you just walk out? I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I walked out and um, the 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 shift manager called me and he was all right. So I was um, he was like, "Hey, are you coming in?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not. No, I'm done." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, no. okay." It's like, yeah, sorry, man. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's a rough one. But I, I did get to uh, the the story that I had mentioned to you um, on Facebook that sparked all this, which is uh, the the worm farm. Yeah, this this was uh, I think easily the most interesting uh, brief I've got <laughs> of somebody's somebody's uh, you know job history. So so I'm excited to hear about this. So it, it was a, like, I was looking, um, well, so like a little backstory. So when I was, when I quit CVBs, I had been living, um, with a roommate and I, I wasn't a good roommate. Um, basically he was like, you, you can't smoke any weed in the apartment. Um, <laughs> cause he was in the military and, and, or he was in the guard or something and he was worried about it. And I being a like, you know, 20 year old shithead was like, all right, well, I'm just, gonna do it anyways yeah sure um so he kicked me out and you know rightfully so um so i moved uh back home and i was like all right well i gotta find a job and i got on craigslist and uh this guy was like you know labor job eight dollars an hour i called him he's like all right you can start tomorrow I was like all right cool i got a job and uh this guy raised earthworms um and sold compost tea um so like when the i guess the the earthworm uh poop and pee juices and all that yeah. um is like incredible fertilizer okay um and uh this guy was actually a project lead at nasa um because for a little background i, I live in huntsville alabama which is space city we've got okay. nasa and marshall space flight center and space camp and all that here um so he was a guy this just this kooky dude who um basically burned all of his vacation to uh kind of like vision or realize his vision for his worm farm business <laughs> and part of that was uh was building a like a log cabin like rabbit hutch for selling like bunnies to kids wow um and he wanted to do it the old school way, um, which is with a with like 
you know, like 1920s, like logging hooks. It's just like a wooden stick with like a little bracket on the end of it and like a, a, like a little kind of sickle shaped uh, thing that you would just like ram it into that and it would dig into the log and then you could lever it to roll the log, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can kind of, I can kind of picture it. Um, so he had us basically just like plop some cinder blocks on the ground and drop like a two by four on top of it and then try to like roll these like, you know, like one foot diameter logs up them like above shoulder height, um, <laughs> which is obviously like, yeah, I mean, this guy could have like rented a crane and he could have been yeah. done in like a day. Yeah, months. but he was gonna pay a bunch of random dudes off Craigslist eight dollars an hour for like months to do it. Many more efficient ways to get this done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and uh, yeah. So I like I showed up the first day and I was helping them out and um, I remember like I slipped off into a ditch because like he built this cabin right next to a big old ditch and was like, "You just get down on that and don't worry about it. You'll be fine." <laughs> Um, and I'm like, okay, there's like, there's no ground for me to stand on. Yeah. Um, so of course I slip, um, and everybody else slips and this dude got his like ribs crushed. Jeez. Um, and this was, and this was just like some guy that was also here because he thought that, you know, an $8 an hour job was a good opportunity. <laughs> um, and he has, uh, I'll, I'll have to send it to you. He has a, um. The Worm Farm guy has a YouTube channel, and uh, he has a lot of prepper videos on, like, building, like, uh, DIY bunkers in okay. your backyard and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that that makes sense. That makes it, it makes total sense that he's a doomsday prepper. Yeah, yeah. I Like, I remember going in for him to pay me, and his room or his, like, little office was just, like, books, like like old paperback books like stacked like as high as possible covering like every surface um just like a real uh just like a, a character yeah um yeah um yeah i've definitely got a few questions um so was so okay this is kind of obviously it's kind of his passion a little bit to 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 make this weird worm tea and oh absolutely yeah and and just i mean do you think he 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 thought that 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 the only way to do this was to hire uh you know laborers um or do you think it, there there was just kind of a part of him who like he he just kind of fantasized uh working as a team to like reach this this weird goal he had in his head um i think it was i don't know i i kind of get got the picture that this guy was just really cheap um yeah. like he had he had one older guy who i guess like helped him like year round with stuff um who he still i remember like thinking like man he just kind of treats this guy like shit <laughs> and and i think he just knew um cuz like i said this is a, this guy was smart this is like a very smart guy mm -hmm. he's like totally un unhinged um but he's like i said he's like a big project lead for nasa um, but he's like this big, like white haired beard guy wearing like nothing but overalls with like a big old beer gut. Um, and he's just like, he's, I don't know, like even like, uh, I remember one time he actually got, um, his tractor and like, a, a cable and a winch out because we were going to pick up one of the logs and he just like threw it up over the tree and like the way it was set up, I'm like. Like this, this could, this thing could kill like all of us right now. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm just thinking like this dude could have spent like, I don't know, like $500 probably to rent something to do this. Um, so maybe it, maybe it was kind of him just wanting to be like a, uh, just be industrious and be, um, you know, 
will be like a log cabin guy basically. yeah yeah i mean be, because too how how long were you guys doing this project for him um well so i did it for like three weeks um and then i was forced to quit um uh, because i was uh t-boned and rolled over in a uh, gnarly car accident oh, and had a uh a uh like bruised uh a bruised kidney and like a lacerated liver and and some 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 internal issues that they were like you can't do anything physical for at least a month or like your liver is gonna rupture um so i told the guy like I, just go ahead and pay me i'm out and he gave me my like I don't know, like my fucking hundred and forty dollars for the week or whatever. Oh my goodness. Um and and I was out. But um I and I've I've talked to people occasionally at, at other jobs who, who knew this guy and who knew who I was talking about. He's kind of built um, a reputation. He's, yeah, the, yeah, he's he's like the worm guy. <laughs> um he's still like he he's I should go check on him because he's he lives like five minutes from my house. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely interested in checking out his, uh, his YouTube channel there. There's, there's still a lot of, ah, I, I just, you know, just, he's, oh, it, he's got hundreds, are... hundreds of videos. Wow. Um, so, you know, talking about that moment when, when kind of, uh, you know, you said one of the, the guys working with you got, got their ribs crushed a little bit, like, um, how, like, were there any serious injuries during this where, you know, was there any pushback to kind of this, this guy's strange requests from any of, you know, the laborers? Um, no, no, I, I think that it was, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I mean, thinking back, I mean, obviously I had a different, um, uh, mindset towards work and towards labor in general. You know, I, I didn't value my own labor as much, at that point um so i mean i was just like well you know i gotta i gotta be a good worker i gotta work hard i gotta uh, you know do whatever this guy says yeah and uh i think the other people were um were probably in that same kind of mindset um so it was just kind of like well, you know whatever this guy says that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna do it until he says we can go home and the guy that got his ribs cracked like i remember him i, I think he came back the next day and he was like, he was like clearly hurting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's like, you know, I need this, I need this, uh, you know, seventy dollars. That's so bleak. Yeah, man. It, it, yeah, it was it definitely like in hindsight, definitely my worst job. Yeah. What 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 year was this? <laughs> um, this was like 2015, probably. Okay. I I'm just thinking, like, you know, if he's a high level guy at NASA and he's like making all of these, you know he's a prepper i'm like thinking like hey you know what does he know that we don't know you know it's like it's like when is when is the comic coming for us yeah well uh, you know i think he's he's got a video about it i'm sure yeah yeah i mean i i i can imagine he's a huge conspiracy theorist oh yeah definitely a um i'm i'm sure it was a lot of uh like you know uh, like bill cooper books and shit uh -huh. that were uh kicking around in his office yeah you know had had you know if i could go back i would definitely want to pick through his books i, I yeah because um, yeah. i'm sure there are some red flags i i'm i'm sure i i uh i don't want to know what what we'd uncover about about him if we went for a deep dive um yeah that that's that's pretty insane um and so it was just kind of three weeks you you ended it and and then that that was it right right so i i had to uh, so at that point i had to get i had to get another job yeah um and i i had heard about um uh, dsw which is designer shoe warehouse um which is like a uh, kind of like a pay less or like a carnival shoe store type deal where, uh, you know, all the merchandise is on the floor, mm -hmm. um, just like stacked up. And uh, I I had heard that they were hiring. Um, so I went in there and, uh, you know, uh, basically did some stocking and then 
uh, worked the cash register and said, uh, you know, next shoe lover in line, please. Is that what um, I had to say? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, next shoe lover, please. Next shoe lover, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and you had and you had and you had sign up quotas for like their rewards program, um, so like you had to you had to sign people up, and I'm like, like I I don't do sales, I don't yeah. do sign ups. Like if you don't want this, I don't blame you. I'm not gonna try to change your mind. That that's one of the the like biggest reasons I I do not ever want to work retail is because I I like no part of me wants to try to convince somebody to sign up for some rewards program or some credit card. It's, it's, it just seems, it, it, it just really seems, um, soul sucking. Yeah. And it, it's like, I, thankfully there was like this, this little old lady that worked in there, um, who would just, um, she was just, she would come and she would get right up in your space and like you would sign up like i guess basically just to get her to to leave you alone and she would <laughs> she would get sign ups for me and give them to me wow um and she yeah, she was she was great um but she, but i was like look i just want to stock stuff i just want to you know yeah. i don't mind doing the register or whatever like i don't yeah i don't i don't want to have to stay next shoe lover i don't want to have to sign people up for shit <laughs> um but that is where um, where I met my wife because she was a um, a kind of like a supervisor there. Oh, nice! So it it worked out in the end. Yeah, there 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 was a uh, a silver lining there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does that old lady still work there? Um, I don't know. I I don't want to say it, but she's probably dead by now. She oh, was really old. Oh no. I'll I'll have to find out. Oh, my my wife probably knows. <laughs> it just sounds like she was born to work at DSW. Yeah, yeah, and and some people are, and you yeah. know, I you know, I I totally respect that because that that's a totally different, you know, skill set, and uh, I couldn't do it, and you know, props to them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if 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 that's what makes you happy, I mean, I've I've worked in you know, restaurants and hotels and, um, there's always like one or two people who like, you can just like tell that the job gives them life and gives them purpose. And they're just, you know, genuinely excited to be there and to be working and they're just putting their, <laughs> they're just putting their all into it. And it's like, I mean, I can't, yeah. I, I can't fault you for that, you know, good for, I'm not gonna, uh, crush your happiness good for you if this is what makes you happy then awesome yeah like yeah no i i'm 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 envious of that if 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 you can just you can just find something like that and just be like you know what this this is this is perfect this will work yeah life would be so much easier oh yeah <laughs> um yeah so i did that for uh i guess a, a couple months um, and, and while that was going on, I was, uh, going to a, a local, uh, technical college, uh, getting a, a welding certificate, um, which I never actually received. Um, and then, uh, and through that, I, I had, uh, four, uh, just real stinkers in a row. Ooh. Um, and, uh, the first was, uh, I, I worked for this guy named Dallas. Um, who did uh, wrought iron fencing in like wrought iron gates? Um, and he had like a little. It was like him and one guy, and uh, like my father-in-law was a residential contractor, and he knew the guy. You know, he used him before for some work, mm -hmm. and um, so he hooked me up. And uh, you know, like I, I learned a couple things, um, and the guy was you know, pretty chill to work for. Um, but he's also just like, just super racist. Yeah. Um, oh man. And like, I remember my first day, he's like, like, you ain't, you ain't got any Muslim in you, do you? Oh my goodness. Um, which it, it sounds crazy, but I mean, if, I mean, being in Alabama, like it's, yeah, you know, it's I mean, not exactly an uncommon mm, type of person that yeah. you run into. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be hard to, uh, to not work with any racists over there, I guess. 
And I mean, oh yeah, it, it, it's you, it's kind of unavoidable. Yeah, you know, when you're in that position too, working for them, it's like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna? I mean, am I gonna storm out? Am I gonna keep my mouth shut and keep working, get, keep getting paid? You know, it's a, it's 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 a moral quandary for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it and it it uh, it became a a bigger issue at a at a later job. Um, but this guy was at least you know. You know, he was he was at least he was polite to people like, you know, he would, you know, he would say a lot of, you know, uh, not good things about about black people. And then like, but he would but, you know, he would obviously he'd be very polite to people's faces. Yeah. Um, and he was like, like, I at least like if this guy takes me out to lunch. Like you know, he's not going to cause a scene or something. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, yep. So I'm like, I can I can put up with this in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he actually uh, he actually ghosted me. He ghosted um, you. Yeah, this grown ass man ghosted me. I mean, it's um, it's those those types of uh, you know business owners who who are you know super bent out of shape over employees ghosting them. So. Uh, you know, they're, they're, this is interesting. You know, it's uh, what. So, what's the story behind that? Why, or do you even know why he goes to you? Um, I think it was like he, I, I don't know. It, it kind of seemed like he didn't really like have. Uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of like we we had we had a good little thing going, and then like I guess he had like a little a slow week or something, and he was just like. I don't really need this guy. <laughs> um, and he just cut me loose. Cause it, he had one other guy that worked with him. Um, but it's like sometimes like we clock out early and like he had a pool table in his shop and we were just like hang out and like play pool for like a dollar a game. Um, so it was like a, I don't know, very like informal. So yeah. I guess he was just like, you know, if I can move, then just gonna move on. Ah, Which is, yeah. you know, it's, um, I guess you know, good, probably good for both of us. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's not a situation you want to, uh, you know, be in long term. I guess, um, but no, but I mean, I mean it's, it, it's not cool though. It's not that's that's not a nice thing to do. Yeah, it's yeah, because it's it's like you know when you're leaving an employer, it's uh, you know you're 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 gonna be like I understand like I don't know you know maybe you only have like uh, some business that runs on three people and one of them just doesn't show up um mm-hmm. uh, i can see how you know that would cause a legitimate issue yeah um but like you know you, i mean you're still getting you're still getting paid <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's it's like that's somebody's uh, like i need some money yeah yeah you gotta um, live somehow yeah um are are you sure it wasn't because you weren't racist enough yeah well i i was uh I, I don't know. You know, I have been uh, I have been reading a lot about Islam lately. So I mean, he might have been onto something. <laughs> he knew. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I I left from there and went to uh, old old British Petroleum, old BP. Okay. Because okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, because um, Decatur, Alabama, is uh, about thirty minutes from me, which I don't know. If, if you're familiar with um but it is a just kind of like a small like industrial zone um it's like bp um daikin and nucor which are like uh metal you know like steel mills and like alloy manufacturers okay um in a lot of big like uh like 3m um just a lot of, a lot of big name uh industrial plants basically um and i got hired to work as a fire watch um which meant i just like lugged around a fire extinguisher and a uh, and a sniffer uh which is like a carbon monoxide and other gas detector um because like they well, like it was it was during a shutdown so basically the plant runs like 24 7 when they need to do maintenance, mm-hmm. they shut it down, and then people work around the clock there to basically get it done as quickly as possible so that they can fire it back up. Okay. Um, and my job was to make sure that basically 
they didn't forget to like empty out all of the gas out of this tank that they were about to be welding in because if you went in there to weld in it and they hadn't then uh you know there wouldn't be any oxygen in there and you would just die jesus um which there were um i don't think there's not any bp that i know of but at um daikin which is like across the street um there have been several deaths there from just like uh undisclosed chemical agents that are just like just like nasty stuff that's you know like just like heavier than air gases that yeah yeah. you know just like yeah so a lot of um yeah you know twelve dollars an hour um is clearly enough to make sure that doesn't happen yeah, I mean that's that's definitely something you you want to give somebody uh, just above minimum wage for to to make sure you know your 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 whole building doesn't explode and everyone dies. Um, yeah, so I've actually I've I've done the same thing just in a very different setting in in uh, one of the last hotels I worked at. Um, we had a fire panel that was fucking up and and would not shut up you know shut off it just kept on beeping um there was nothing really wrong with with the the fire alarm there were no fires or anything and um the company that owned the hotel they you know the deal was that that the fire panel was super old and had to be replaced it was just a piece of shit and uh the fire department had already been you know been there to inspect it and like had told us a bunch of times but um, the company just did not want to to pay to have it replaced, and no. so so while they were trying to come up with some plan to to save them money and and still operate, um, we we you know we got in trouble so many times that we had to have somebody on fire watch, um, and, <laughs> and and so during the day it was the maintenance guy, uh, and I I at the time was the acting general manager because. You know, we had two general managers in a row that kind of jumped ship, and I was the the, the second person in charge, and and so I I ended up having to do, uh, you know, walk the hallways to to with a with a fire extinguisher to make sure that there was no fires in any room, just you know, so the so the fire department would you know was happy. Um, and did 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 people ever come out and see you walking the halls with the fire extinguisher? Yeah, I mean, th- th- this was definitely, you know, not a... Like, while it was occupied? <laughs> Nobody ever, like, caught me and, like, at, you know, because it, it was the middle of the night, so I, I don't remember any, like, people questioning me, but it was kind of an open secret because it it was just a very annoying place to to to, to be because the fire panel was, like, constantly going off, like, every every half an hour or so yeah uh the, the, oh, it, would, it would go off so people were were hearing uh you know all these noises all the time and then every once in a while the whole building the alarms would go off and so i mean it was kind of an open secret everyone knew that this was a, a trash hotel and that we you know, the company doesn't care about anyone's safety so it was just it was just a, a massive shit show you know not not quite as important as um as your job but 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 you know kind of i you know i that sounds i yeah that's crazy that's that's not something that you should have in a hotel <laughs> no no and and th- there's people fucking living there too it's an extended stay hotel people have lived there for years it's like you just don't give a shit about their safety no because i mean if 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 uh um you know, I also work at uh, at UPS now, and and something that I've learned there is that you know the the squeaky wheel uh, gets the grease, and um, and I, it sounds like they wanted y'all to shut the fuck up. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. it knows squeaking. Yes, stops. The only thing that can squeak is the fire panel. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, back to BP. That that I mean. What was that job like? You know, what what was your your day like there? Were you, were you you know doing any actual um, like work with the machinery or? or was... um, I I did I I tried to do well. So like I I took the job to try to get a foot in the door. Um, like it wasn't for BP. It was for a um, a contractor servicing um, BP. It was like basically the big contractor that 
that worked all the shutdowns in the area. And I knew a guy um, who was there and he was making, you know, like, you know, $40 an hour and, you know, nice. working like, you know, 60, 70 hours a week or mm-hmm. something, you know, making a lot of money uh, welding. And I was like, well, you know, I, I can weld. I just finished this welding program. Um, uh, so my goal was to get into the shop um, and take a test. Um because like they can, you know, you can go to school for welding, but like nobody gives a shit about the paperwork. They're like, that's cool, and then they throw it away and they say, okay, weld this, yeah. and you know, we'll see how you do. Um, so it's like I'll, I'll do the, I'll do the fire watch, and then that'll kind of get my foot in the door, um, which wasn't the case, um, <laughs> but it was like I, you know, I'd get up and I had to be out there at like six in the morning, and it was like you know, almost an hour away from my house. Um, and Ooh. I'd get out there and, and I remember some days it, it was just like a struggle to stay awake mm-hmm. because it was, it was just like, I, it was basically like stand in this one spot until four o'clock. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I like, I don't even know what the fuck to do. Like, I can't, like, I can't be on my phone. I can't like, I'm just sitting here like, Oh, you... Twiddling this fire extinguisher around. You couldn't fuck around at all. No, but no, because then like, like what? Like, they would absolutely have fired me if they had caught me like yeah. doing anything. Because yeah. this was like a, you know, the bottom of the the bottom rung yeah. job. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I would try to like I I remember um they were uh, pulling a like steam condenser out of this big uh like kind of like catwalk structure building thing um if you think about just like a big industrial building you know it's a it's like a six-story building but it's all kind of open it's all okay. like catwalks and stairwells um, okay yeah and they had to get the tools up there to the fifth floor um so we like set up a like a hoist and I was like, I was like, I volunteer. I'm like, I'll, I'll pull all, I'll pull the hoist. <laughs> um, so I'm pulling this like Home Depot bucket with like, you know, like 120 pounds of shit in it, um, up like five flights. Oh God. Um, because I was like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I joke that it's my, my, my ancestral Protestant, uh, <laughs> work ethic that I, I have to do all the hard jobs. This comes out in you. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, I, you know. And I, I would, uh, you were trying let to me do a couple them. things. Yeah. 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 I, I think I, I think I was win some brownie points. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I ended up getting let go after the shutdown. Um, it didn't help that, uh, I lost the key. Oh no. Um, for a, like I lost a lockout tag out key. That sounds um, important. Yeah. Uh, so like when, when you're working there, like everybody that's working there has to go to like, like the central control board basically and put a lock on this thing. And basically it's like, once this job's over, everybody has to take the locks off to basically ensure that like everybody's out. Okay. Um, and I, I've, I've gotten better, but I was the absolute worst about just like, I would, I would, I would leave like one thing everywhere I went. <laughs> I was constantly losing just little shit. And I lost this key like within an hour of getting it. <laughs> um, and they were like, you know, we're going to have to have like, like my boss's boss and like the fucking like head of like the plant is going to have to come down there. Oh my God. Like there's a whole big procedure in, in order to like cut a lock. It's like a big fucking deal. And they ended up having like a spare key back in the shop. Yeah. Um, so they didn't have to, but I, I think that was probably the main reason that they didn't bring me back, which, you know, it, that's on me. Uh, yeah. Which, I mean, that's I didn't miss out on anything. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that that's that's mortifying because that's that's something that I would do, you know, for sure. I've I've working at hotels, I've lost so many keys, and you know, uh, master keys to hotels are are pretty important. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that's so they, they they didn't fire you, but you think that 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 kind of no, I I was, was I was basically just laid off. Yeah. 
and that's why you think they didn't keep you on. Yeah, I I think that they're uh, I don't think that they had um, much intention of bringing me back. Um, like I said, a lot of a lot of these positions are like short term for the duration of the shutdown. Yeah, um, and and they didn't have you know a reason to keep me, um, and that was probably you know a you know, you put a strike on top of that and yeah, and that's sure. an easy that's an easy decision for them. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, that's that's uh too bad. I mean, um you you didn't try to like reapply or anything? Or no, no other um, opportunities. No, I ended up um I ended up uh somebody somebody else that I knew that worked for I guess that same company but like a different like division of it um got me a weld test um but my problem was that uh i learned at the trade school on all this nice new machinery Mm -hmm. um it's all digital and everything and i went to take this weld test and this machine was like 70 years old (laughs) um and i was like i don't even know how to set this thing up jesus and um and i should have you know i should have been i should have you know brought that up and been you know explained it to them and maybe they would have uh, helped me with it. Um, but I didn't do, uh, you know, as, as good as I could have due to that. Sure. Um, yeah. and depending on what they're doing, you know, they can be, uh, they can be very, uh, specific in their, you know, tolerances and everything for that. Yeah. Um, that, that makes sense. So, but I did get a, I did end up getting an actual welding job. Um, at a uh, at a place that made storm shelters, um, and it was, in hindsight, actually the worst job. Um, really, and this place like perpetually had a big old help wanted sign outside, and uh, that's, a, so it was that's like, a red flag, major red flag. Yeah, so this this place in Scottsboro, Alabama. Um, called Valley Storm Shelter, and uh, they so they made these little storm shelters that you buy, and you'd pay like you know like ten grand for one, and they'd come and they'd basically you know like like you know dig your yard up and you know like you know bury it and everything. Um, and that was a I think they were paying me ten dollars an hour. What? Um, what were you doing there? Yeah. Weld, welding up storm shelters. You were welding up storm shelters for ten dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. It was from uh, it was from like six to five, um, and the guy who trained me um, had, I guess, just got out of prison, <laughs> um, and had a and had a, a a bunch of like Aryan Brotherhood tattoos. Oh no! Um, I remember he had he had "Love Thy Race" on his hand. <laughs> um. <clears throat> And I think his brother also worked there and was like a local like firefighter or something. Yeah, of course. Um, and like the boss's son was the manager, and they were all into this. Is when the uh, the kratom um, like little five hour energy shots were really big. Okay. I don't know if you yep. you were aware of those. I I, um, I I mean, I don't remember what they were called. I've never tried them, but but I I do. You, I, you know what I'm talking I, about. I do recall them. Yeah. Yeah, just like you know, a synthetic opioid kind of deal that you could buy at the gas station. Yeah, and um, and like everybody there would just do like, like three or four of those a shift, <laughs> while they were welding up these storm shelters. Um, uh, that you know they were. I'm sure that the labor cost to build one was like a grand, and they were selling them for ten. Yeah, um, yeah, that's it's a markup. Yeah, that they're they're making bank for sure. Yeah. So I, I had um I had I had been putting in applications elsewhere and talking to uh my welding instructor at, at school about it and he um he hooked me up, you know, told me about an interview. I went and interviewed and they and I got the job and it was uh at Navistar, um which builds uh train engines or train cars one. Um and uh I so it was through a temp agency, and it was like 
thirteen dollars, but I think I was only getting eleven because the temp agency was getting like two of it. Oh my god! Um, and it was like a temp to permanent thing, but you know, like some of the people were temp, you know, for years. Yeah. And with yeah. no end in sight. Yeah, there, there's, um, there's no promise uh, of the permanent part. Yeah, nothing contractual. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, I had to take a a hair test for this eleven dollar an hour temp job. The, uh, um, a hair sample? Yes. Oh my god, that that's yeah. That's not... The only time I've ever seen it or even known anybody outside of like some Department of Defense shit. Yeah, right. Um, and and I failed, and I and I hadn't I hadn't smoked weed in like four or five months or it must or, have been the five hour or it, it'd been a couple it'd been no not that long it'd been a couple months though because i was yeah. like if, if this had been a piss test i would have passed it a hundred times over yeah yeah um so i got a call from the um from the lab while i was in my orientation and you know they call you and they're like um we're just calling to see if you have any uh any uh, doctor's note or medical uh excuse for why you test positive for uh for cannabis <laughs> <laughs> and so i just got up and left so i was like you know it was my turn to take the picture and i was just like you know, just don't don't even bother yeah yeah <laughs> like i was getting like i was getting my name tag basically um when they called what? and I was like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and go. That's ridiculous. Um, but my, uh, but that's actually the day that I, I started, uh, cubicles full time because the guy that I've been, you know, working on and off for, you know, on the side kind of is like a, is like a hired hand, uh-huh. um, was like, Hey, you want to go to the university of Georgia and, you know, do like some auditorium seating at the chemistry building. Um, I was like, all right, well, yeah, well, I'll be there in like, uh, five hours. Nice. And I did, I drove to the university of Georgia and, uh, and he's a really cool guy. You know, he's very, you know, I, I worked for him for, you know, the better part of 10 years. Um, and he, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of, uh, the, the start of, I guess my, like the, this this latter half of my yeah. working life so i i i kind of want to focus on the um the storm shelter thing a little bit more <laughs> if that's okay oh yeah um oh yeah how, how long were you at that job what like what happens if you know three days do, three days yeah so you you just jumped ship pretty much for a better opportunity right Yes. Yeah. I, I got, basically I got the call that I had, um, that I had the job at Navistar and I told them, um, and they were, they were pretty understanding because like I said, they're, they always had a help wanted sign Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they just had like perpetual turnover. Damn. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think you really did dodge a bullet. They're only, only working there for three days because I can imagine that that would be truly hellish and working with just with just the worst type of people. Uh, yeah, and a lot of lot of lot of sketchy, just like um, it's just a lot of like a lot of like uh, you know like cutting wheels just kind of just exploding left and right. Damn. Yeah. Um, a lot of like. It's basically like I learned how to weld in school, and then when I got there, they were like, "Like, what the hell are you doing? Just crank that thing all the way up and, and run it, run it as fast as you can." Oh my gosh! Yeah, of course. Totally, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally different. Yeah. Um, so, how long have you been with your your uh, current company? Um, so the the place that I'm at now, I've actually um, I have not even gotten my first paycheck yet. Oh wow! Okay. Um, Fresh. So. In, uh, well, like three weeks. Um, I I should have gotten paid already, um, but I'm getting paid on the 28th, um, because this is like my first job in a long time that pays biweekly, and oh, I guess yeah. I joined it at the perfect time to not that, get shit. That's that's what happens to me every time. I mean, I'm I am a chronic job jumper, so uh, you know, 
my punishment for that is is every time I do uh, jump ship to a new company, I I pick the the wrong time to start, and I have to wait a month to get paid, and it's um it's it's awful. Yeah, so I I do feel your pain. Um, well, I mean that's 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 good. You know, good good for you. I think. Uh, I mean, seems like it's it's a better fit than than most of the you know other positions you've you've kind of jumped through recently or in the last few yeah, years. The, yeah, the, this is just like a it, it's another uh, like well, so so I ended up at it because I uh, like I I was doing you know I, I'm in my main cubicle business. Um, and I ended up, you know, I've been there long enough. I started out as like a hired hand and then I became a move coordinator because we also did like personnel relocation. Um, and then I found myself in the office and then next thing you know, I'm like bidding on like contracts. Um, and that's not something I don't know that that's something that I know nothing about. Um, <laughs> And my boss, the owner of the, this is like a mom and pop company. I mean, this uh, was like, this is like a five person company. Gotcha. Doing like, you know, you know, like a couple hundred cubicles at a time. Yeah. Um, doing like, like punching, punching above its weight because like we would just work like, uh, like all the time. And my boss was just like constantly just fucking stressed running around. Mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up uh, in the office and just was miserable. It was like it was the most money I was making, but it was like this this work isn't for me. Like I don't even know how much of this I'm doing right because like my boss he doesn't want to know. He's mm. like I don't want anything to do with it. Nobody <laughs> wants anything to do with it. Yeah. I'm like once I get into it, I'm like you know I don't want anything to do with it either. Yeah. Now that I'm doing it. I can see why um, you don't want to deal with this shit. No, no, because it's a because like it's a totally different um, it's a totally different skill set. Yeah, and and type of person to do that job. Um, and so I ended up going to um, to UPS, and um, where I I still work. So I've been working two jobs since um, October. So I work at UPS in the warehouse uh, doing preload. And then uh, I go, I would go to my furniture job after that. I was like, get me out of the office. I'm going to volunteer a pay cut to fucking get me out of this. Just let <laughs> me go back to putting shit together. Um, and so that's what I did. Yeah. But um, between, uh, basically between Thanksgiving and Christmas, the part-time UPS job is full-time. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it's balls to the wall for those couple months. Yeah. Like normally, like right now, like, like this morning, uh, it was close. So I didn't have to be there until like five fifteen. but like during peak, like you, you start at 2 AM and you don't get off until like 10. Um, so you do, you'll do a full eight before lunch. Um, but the way it's set up is that anything over five hours is overtime because it's part time. Okay. Um, so for that basically peak period, it's a full time job, both in hours and pay. Because you know you're taking home like eight or nine hundred dollars a week mm -hmm. on a sixteen fifty an hour job. Um, just based on how it's like you're getting more overtime hours than straight hours, basically. Oh wow. Okay. Um, but. But now that it's gone back to normal, I'm back to getting like you know like three hundred dollars a week from them, um, and I was I was about to go back to uh, to my regular job, and then I jumped on Craigslist and I saw a job for uh, somebody, uh, basically the guy that assembles the like display items at Home Depot, um, and I got hired for it, and then. <laughs> like the day before I was going to start it, I got a call back on the other job I applied for, which is, which was a different cubicle job. And I was like, well, this assembly, like this Home Depot assembly job is just like some contractor shit. So I, I just didn't show up. I just fucking ghosted them. Nice. <laughs> so I'm like, this is some big fucking contractor out of like Florida or something. Yeah. And I'm like, I, 
I don't, I don't, you know, if it was like a, a little local company, I might, I might care, but I'm like, I don't, I can't deal with no, this. I'm just no, going to no, no. not show up and take the other job. Not, not worth it. So that's, that's a lot in, in, in a short period of time. Um, so, so you're not, are, are you doing, you're, you're, you're still just doing two jobs, right? Yeah. 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 I go to UPS and then I go to my, uh, my new cubicle job, um, which is much, it's just easier and better in every way yeah. than the first one. So how do you deal with, uh, you know, doing two jobs? I've, I've, I've tried to do it a couple of times and it, it's, it's difficult for me and I don't even have a kid. Um, uh, well, uh, I have a prescription for Vyvanse, which helps. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's the good stuff. Um, yeah, that, that is, uh, which, which I did, you know, I, I have for like, I guess like, uh, like a year and a half now. Yeah. Um, I'm, but I'm, it, it I'm definitely became it. a necessity. I'm slumming it with, uh, Adderall. Yeah. Oh, well that's, I, I, oh, I, I did that all first, but this is, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. I was taking, I was taking Adderall and like working, like unloading trucks, like in, in the Alabama summer and just like. I'm like I'm just I'm literally gonna just overheat and die if I keep doing yeah. this. Yeah. Um, but it's it it was it was really hard. I like my my whole holidays. I was fucking miserable because I was sleeping like basically like four and a half hours a night for like two months, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it it definitely it definitely wears on you, and and everybody there gets you know noticeably. Um, less happy as, as time goes on because it, it really does uh like I, I feel kind of used to it now like i get up at that you know you know even on my day off like i i still i get up at like probably like four in the morning um and just kind of uh i don't know it's like i'd rather if i'm gonna have to give my time i'd rather i'd rather do it while my family's sleeping than you know um be a guy you know who has to work late hours yeah yeah miss your time with them i i totally agree with that and yeah i mean it it is an adjustment and you know maybe it's not a forever thing you know if it works for right now and that's that's awesome that's that's how i looked at it and i, I yeah mean, i only had to do it for a, a few months before um before i stopped uh, but I mean, it, it, it seems like you're kind of on a better track now than, than, you know, you were kind of, you know, it, it seems like, yeah, at least, you know, kind of what you want to do and what, what, what you're good at, what, you know, what fits. Yeah. I've, I've got a, um, well, it's like, that's something that I, I kind of, you know, learned in retrospect, uh, getting this most recent installation job is that I could, I could go in there. And, you know, this guy hired me, um, it was, they wanted a full-time installer and I was like, Hey, I can only work part-time and like, I can get there when I get there. Um, but I've got, you know, like 10 years experience in doing all this. Um, and they were like, all right, you're hired. And like, you know, they gave me the pay that I wanted, um, without any negotiating or anything. Damn. See, that's, um, that's the dream. Just being able to like, uh, it's something I've learned with with my with my son and and um, and being autistic is that like you have to advocate for them. Yes. Yeah. And, and you have to do you have to do that for yourself also as as a worker. You have to advocate advocate and that's that's a um, point. Yeah. Be able to like sell. You know, you 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 got to be able to sell yourself, and you have to know what you're worth to do that. Absolutely. And I, I mean, most people, they don't even have a concept of that and I, you know, they're all worth so much more, but, uh, I, I think that's a great point. Cause, cause one thing that I like immediately, uh, thought of was like, I, I think my mom is, is very good at doing that. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, uh, my, my little sister is, is, you know, what was, uh, developmentally disabled. And, and, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that kind of like like brings out uh, kind of a more assertive, um, 
you know, when when you have to advocate for for somebody else, you know, I think that's that's the logical extension is like, hey, I'm I'm worth more too, you know, which which is great. I think, yeah, yeah, and and, and that's definitely not something we we focus on. Like, we should be teaching kids, you know, what what they're worth, and and you know, not you know turning them into good little worker bees who you know who just do what the boss tells you because that's what we learned in school you know we we learned how to follow directions and all that and that's that's what we're expected to do for the rest of our lives yeah and 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 i think that and i think that you can like you can do that like you can be a you can be a a drone and you can still understand like the value of your position and how to use that yeah yeah absolutely um, and that's something that, that UPS taught me because, you know, UPS is, uh, this is a contract year. Um, so, um, our contract, yeah, you know, the Teamsters UPS contract is up, um, in, I guess like the end of July, beginning of August. Um, I saw so, that, yeah. so things are getting a little, little contentious. Um, and it is, it has been just great. Just everybody up there, you know, like your manager comes by, a supervisor comes by, and everybody's just like, you know what, fuck that guy. <laughs> and and you know what, there's there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do about it. Yeah, that's because because of the power of the contract gained through you know organized labor and collective bargaining. Hell yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's beautiful. I mean, the pay sucks, for sure. but yeah. It's, um, and it does have like the best insurance that uh, it's it's basically a twenty four hundred dollar a month insurance package that you get for free after nine months. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that like a uh, hundred dollar uh, deductible for the year. Um, no premium. Who, who five dollar cap on prescription. Who uh, who else gets that? That I've I've never seen such a thing. That's 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 it's like like Congress people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's Nancy yeah. Pelosi's uh, insurance yeah. policy. Uh, well, that's what they they call it the golden handcuffs. Uh, mm-hmm. Because if sense. you leave, you if you if you miss more than a week of work, you lose it. Wow. Well, yeah. That's 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 a that's a problem in itself. But <laughs> um, yeah. But but it's it's you know every every year every contract yeah you know you. You you win a little more and uh, you know see a little bit more of what you want to see. Yeah, I I hope you guys win big this year. Hope hope it's you know they don't try to pull pull a railroad uh, you know trickery on you. With these uh... yeah, they're they're we basically you know my understanding from talking to the steward and and you know rumblings online is that. Um, it's basically expected that we're going to strike for probably two weeks and then we'll probably get what we want. That's, that's kind um, of the, the vibe. That's the atmosphere that it's going to come to a strike. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, that's, um, the, the, the new teamsters president, um, you know, the former teamsters president was, was Jimmy Hoffa's kid. Oh yeah. Um, and he, the contract was pushed through on like a, like low voter turnout clause. Um, it was like a 49 to 51, like contract. Um, so a lot of people were unhappy about it. And this guy came in and said, you know, we're getting, we're getting rid of the clause. Um, and this whole thing is, you know, like we need like a return to like a more, more militant union and more, yeah. you know, more united, uh, more, uh, you know, I'm going to say more radical, Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, people are fired up these days. I think, you know, there there is a return to, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, prioritizing unions again. And um, yeah, I think I think we might be on the cusp of uh, of, uh, you know, some some more things popping off. And I wish all you guys the best of luck. Hopefully hopefully it goes in your favor and it's not too uh not too disastrous for you know for the for striking 
No, they're they're supposed to be getting uh, Amazon workers in. Um, the Teamsters are trying to to get into Amazon, and then, and if they can do that, oh, uh, you know, combined with UPS, yeah. then that's. I mean, they're already the biggest union in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's game uh, over for Amazon, throw, maybe. Yeah, that that would be great. Um, so, thanks for for sharing your story. That that I mean, there that there's so much to to unpack and talk about. I I uh, that that was, you know, it's not even just the worm guy. The worm guy is is an, is, <laughs> is a crazy amazing story. But um, but 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 yeah, no, I I. I appreciate all of it i've just got a few more questions to ask you if that's oh, yeah. okay oh yeah <laughs> sweet um how do you deal with the miserable work environment like you know it, it seems like you you've been through quite a few in your you know your career um how do you cope how do you get by in in a in a job you just can't stand um, I think uh, uh, having uh, having headphones is, is definitely a or having a job that lets you wear you know headphones and listen to you yeah. know music or podcasts or something like that. Especially if you're doing something that's just like repetitive. Um, For sure, can really can really make or break your day, and um, and sometimes it's uh, it's kind of like uh, just just find finding the guy to. Uh, not necessarily a guy, but just, you know, finding something to be like, um, to just get kind of fired up about, um, like, especially at UPS, it's like, you know, um, you might just think about like some of the, some of the bullshit that you're going through there and that might help you kind of, um, especially at UPS, it's like, you know, this is an issue. I don't like this, you know, um, but at the same time, like, you know, I, this contract says that I need to work safely and I need to work at my own pace. And, you know, um, I, you know, I just got to make it to the end of this. Yeah. And, uh, there's not really anything that they can do or, or tell me. Um, and that's kind of a, a big, uh, a, a big source of solace. Um, yeah, for sure. That's, it's that's just kind of being aware of like your, you know, the, the, that small bit of power that you've, that you wield in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's important. I mean, obviously that's a, that's a huge benefit of a union, but even, even without a union, um, in a lot of jobs, like in that moment when you're working, the company needs you more than you need them. Um, obviously, you know, they can fire you and find somebody else, but I mean, it's not as easy as as they make it seem. You know, it's uh, you, they're 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 not gonna, um, uh, you know, you you can you know make make your your work life a little bit more comfortable if if again we go go back to being um it, you know an advocate for yourself. Uh, I you know I think that's that's that that's a great thing to realize is like wow they they need me to to perform a critical function here like like i i've i've got some leverage yeah and 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 a lot of times it's like if you're doing something and you're like this is this is backwards like why are we doing like doing it like this and if like sometimes you can just ask them like hey like why don't we do it this way and and every now and then you're like you know they're like well nobody's ever actually you know thought to to actually ask us to do this differently yeah and right. you might actually like the the change might just be right there waiting for you yeah yeah i think i think that's very well said a lot of people are are just uh you know afraid to to push it to push the envelope a little bit when you know they 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 could uh make a good you know significant change um, yeah, well, especially here that that's totally against uh, you know how you're you're raised and taught is that you know it's it's yeah you work and you be happy that you have a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah. It's uh, just it's it really is all about framing. We just got to change how we teach teach kids about jobs and the the that that working relationship because it's all it's all screwy um so 
as as a job jumper, you know, it's it's we fall into that trap where it's we jump from shitty job to shitty job, you know, what's what I've been doing my entire life. Um, at this point, do you feel like you escaped that trap? And do you think escape is possible? Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think that I have. Uh, I think that. It, I think that it's it's possible, um, it, at least in my personal situation. I mean, I've already kind of got my, my next one planned. Uh, That's the key, um, right? You you kind of have one foot out. You know, you you keep one foot in, one foot out, ready to to jump at any moment. Yeah, because I'd like to eventually. I'd like to only work one job, and I'm thinking, uh, uh, you know, I, I can. UPS has good tuition reimbursement, so uh, I'd like to, you know, maybe look at doing like a commercial electrical work, maybe get like a like a decent union electrician job. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and that kind of be kind of kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, my my uh, my grandfather was. Uh linesman lineman um with with the the electric company in the town that he lived in and and i mean um he's just a huge union guy even to this day he's like in his mid 80s he goes to union meetings still and yeah and and that, they, that's, that's like the last yeah. bastion for a lot of that yes stuff. yeah absolutely but 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 he's i mean god he they he uh that's how he, you know, made his living. They, they, they uh, paid him, you know, very, very, you know, handsomely. And it's, it's just, uh, it's like a, a living example in my eyes of, of, uh, of the power of a union. Cause, cause like he, he really made a great life for, for, you know, his family with, with just the one job, which is like you, that you can't do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, the, the trades are really one of the, the last it's like the trades and manufacturing are kind of like the last areas where it's it's uh i don't know it's it's like you know the decline of unions has kind of coincided with everything shifting to like a you know more service based economy yeah. or whatever uh-huh. and it's it and it's a lot harder to it it's a lot harder to like have that organized power in a service job for sure um if if you're not somebody like you like the Teamsters who have the numbers and like, you know, the historical precedent and everything. Yeah. Very true. Um, so putting, putting all of the, 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 the struggle and the, the longing and the hardship of, of these jobs aside, uh, what would your life look like if you did not need to work and all of your needs were met? Oh, I um, I probably just have uh, I don't know. I I probably just do like uh, some woodworking or something. I that that's kind of the dream is to have like something that I could build in like my garage. And, I don't know, sell on like Etsy or something. Yeah. yeah. So I could work from home and I could still. Um, I don't. Know, I I have a I have a problem with buying power tools. <laughs> um, and uh, and you know, getting Home Depot uh no interest financing coupons um so something to you know something to utilize that like i like i like playing with my toys and i'd like a job that allows me to do that definitely and everything else is kind of secondary to that yeah yeah i mean you got to put that addiction to good use somehow uh yeah because it is something that like you know these these can be productive Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in an ideal world, I think, uh, you know, you'd, you'd make a lot of use out of that. I think that's, I think that that would be a uh, nice life. And I mean, that, like how, how functional it just, it's, it's just, you could, you, you know, build stuff for friends or family or, you know, whatever. It's, or in it's, like a habitat for humanity yeah, type organization. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. It's, I mean, there, there could be, it could just actually fix things instead of, you know, uh, you know, instead of, uh, you know, go, go by profit. Like, you know, yeah. we could just, yeah, fix things. We could just go fix all the roads or fix, you know, the yeah. rundown houses and everything. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, you know, not, not build all these new luxury condos. Let's, let's fix the infrastructure we have here. What a novel idea. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, that's, that, that does sound like a dream. Um, 
so thank thank you for for all your time here you know i really appreciate it um was there anything we didn't cover that you wanted to uh talk about before we wrap up no i think i had only uh i had only missed uh one on my list um and it was uh i had mentioned earlier um that uh a working with a super racist guy became an issue later. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, being that, uh, and it's funny because this was a this is like a four man crew with two supervisors uh-huh. and two guys doing all the work. Um, and it was me and uh, this super racist guy, <laughs> um, who was like a cabinet maker who hadn't filed his taxes in like 22 years oh, of course um and owed the irs like a quarter of a million dollars or something jesus um and he he was actually kind of like why i left um in that like we'd be yeah oh, dude like we'd like we'd have to go out to eat together and we're all riding together and he'd see like like a black guy and a white girl and he'd be like talking about oh, she's a uh, race trader and oh, like, no. like 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 the kind of guy that like when you're driving and he's in the passenger seat he's like trying to hang out the window and like yell at people oh my god um which there are a lot of those guys in, in alabama even being in in a in one of the more progressive cities in alabama um which is kind of one of the one of the downsides of being in the trades is that you're more likely to run into those people. Yeah, you got the good old boys kind of uh with within those ranks. Yeah, and and it's and it, it is getting better uh you know as as you know as the younger generation gets in um some of that stuff is is kind of dying out or you know they're at least keeping it to themselves. Yeah, I mean just like being around that kind of guy is mortifying that's that's it's it's just uh makes you i mean angry of course but also just like uncomfortable because like you never know when they're gonna have an outburst yeah and the and the worst part was it's like this is the guy that's doing all the all the work besides me like the other two guys are are supervising basically yeah or just like arguing with each other it's like this is the guy who you know from a from a working standpoint this is me and him are are should be you know two peas in a pod on the same page yeah and like this is the fucking pea that i'm stuck with <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that that's that's uh you're you're not both gonna fit in that pod no no so i yeah so i, I decided that i'm out <laughs> yeah i mean but yeah that 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 was uh i think that's the gist of it obviously i've done uh side jobs with friends who do side jobs on all that but that's uh i guess all all 16 of them damn yeah that that's that's quite the list i mean i i appreciate how comprehensive it was i i i i'm trying to think of like any like straight up racists that i've ever worked with like i mean I I think there have been some, but but it's just that kind of like liberal, subtle racism, you know. Um, yeah. So I mean, obviously, I don't live I don't live down south, so that could that could be a different story if I if I did. But um, but yeah, that 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 sounds pretty mortifying. I'm glad you you uh, were able to jump ship from that one. Um, J- Joe, did you want to to shout anything out, plug anything before we? Uh, say good night uh i'd say uh you know if at all possible um you know find a good union job and uh i guess like we talked about you know just uh just remember that you have to be an advocate for yourself because uh it's very rarely that somebody will 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 voluntarily do that for you Mm -hmm. and you can you could leave a lot on the table um by not being confident in, you know, what you have to offer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, agreed. I think that's a that's a really great message to to leave to leave us with here. Um, Joe, thanks again for for your time. I that, that that was an awesome chat. I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, let's let's talk again sometime. 
Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun. Awesome. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you again to Joe for your time and for your stories. For anyone interested in being on the podcast, if you yourself are a job jumper and you feel like you have some stories you want to share with the world, uh, please, please, please reach out. Uh, You can email me at jobjumperspod at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if, If you wanted to be on the podcast, great. If you just wanted me to read your story on the podcast, I would love to do that as well. Whatever works best for you. You can follow us on Twitter at JobJumpersPod, as well as on Instagram at JobJumpersPod. Please do us a favor and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. All right, folks, keep jumping. We'll see you next week.